we will learn what is Granger causality in this video. In time series forecasting, we normally use the univariate data. We use the data for a single series to predict its future values. For instance, if you have Google's price data, so we have got Google's price data for several months. So if we are to uh, predict the prices of uh, Google stock, then we will use the past data or past values of the prices of Google stock. Okay, and that's enough to do the prediction. Sometimes we need multiple series for better predictions. So why do we need multiple time series? Why do we need to have you know more than one time series for prediction? Why just you know same time series is not enough? Well, it's enough, but we can actually better we can improve on the prediction by using multiple time series. So uh, sometimes we need to understand uh, the relationship between several components or several time series components. Or second thing is to get better of forecast. So here is an example. We have got the US CPI inflation data and we have got the US short term nominal interest rate. You can see both are highly correlated. So if we were to forecast or predict the value of US CPI inflation for future, we can not just use the CPI data, the past data for CPI, we can also use the past data of short term nominal interest rate. That's where Granger causality comes into picture. In such scenarios, to understand the relationship between these two time series, we need to understand what Granger causality is. So here is another example. So we have got the correlated series for GDP. The GDP per capita for the OECD nations are very correlated. You can see in the particular graph, they are very correlated. They are upward trending. So if we were to predict the GDP for a you know, given OECD nation, we can make use of the GDP growth for other OECD nations and that would help us you know, improving on the forecast. A few observations we have made by looking at the two graphs in the previous two slides. So many time series move simultaneously. So we can make use of other time series to forecast for a given time series. This happens mostly in financial time series. So one stock market will get affected by the movement in other stock market. For instance, the New York stock market will get affected by the fluctuation in London stock market. Okay, so the time series data collected from New York stock market can well be used to forecast the values uh, whether it's stock index or whether it's stock prices of different stocks in the London stock exchange. So knowing the interrelation is very important for better forecasting. So that's one aspect of financial time series. So one example could be, uh, let's say a fund manager is managing several asset classes. So they will be very correlated. We can not only use the uh, time series data for the same asset class, we can also take the time series data for different, different other asset classes which will also help us, help us in predicting the given asset classes future values. That's exactly the reason why we need to understand what Granger causality is. Well, XT is a time series and YT is another time series. XT Granger causes YT if the past values of XT helps in predicting the future values of yt so yt is not just a function of yt minus 1 or the lag of yt uh, it also is a function of the lag of xt okay if that is the case then we say that xt granger causes yt and there are two conditions to be met the first condition is that the cause happens prior to the effect that means yt is is a function of xt minus 1 not not xt so yt has to be uh, the function of the lag not the same period so the cause has to be prior to the effect this is the effect yt is the effect whereas xt minus 1 is the cause so it has to be the lag not not the exact time period okay and the cause has unique information about the future values of its effect. In other words, we can say that the lags of xt helps us in predicting the value of yt, the future values of y, in the presence of the lag of yt. That means it has an extra effect. Okay, so it should have an extra effect.
okay and mathematically we can see that okay so mathematically how do we explain granger causality well let's take the invariant case so yt is a0 plus a1 yt minus 1 this is a typical ar1 model right so we're trying to predict the value of y the future values of yt given the past values of yt just the first lag we have taken in the second equation we have added the lag of xt as well okay so yt is now a function of the lag of yt and the lag of xt so yt equal to a0 plus a1 yt minus 1 plus a2 xt minus 1 so if a2 is significant that means in the presence of yt minus 1 in the presence of the lag of yt if xt minus 1 adds value to the model or improves on the model uh, then only uh, we say that xt granger causes yt okay and for that we need to see the significance level of this estimate a2 okay so how do we check that we just do a t test we do a t test and the null hypothesis is that a2 is which means xt doesn't grandeur cause yt so that's the null hypothesis the alternate hypothesis is that a2 is not equal to 0 that means X, xt grandeur causes yt the three important steps uh, to understand the grandeur causality first when you build a model where we have the presence of grandeur causality we'll just take the the lags of the same variable first or the same series so let's say we are trying to predict the value of yt we'll only take the lags of yt which is yt minus 1 yt minus 2 and let's say yt minus p the number of lags that are significant in the first step we'll take to the second step and then we will add the lags of the xt and then we'll re-estimate and then we'll find out how how many of these coefficients of the lags of the xt are significant and that we do it by doing the t test for individual coefficient and f test to test it jointly and how do we uh, do that well the null hypothesis is that b1 b2 up to bp are all zero and the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is non-zero if one of them is non-zero then we can be very sure that xt granger causes yt so only one of them one of the estimate one of the b uh, values has to be a non-zero uh, for it to granger causes another important thing to note here is that we also need to make sure that by adding the lags of xt we are improving on the prediction so how does knowing granger causality helps us building time series model well, we all are familiar with the basic AR or MA or ARIMA modeling process where we use only univariate data. By including multivariate data or by including uh, other variables, we can improve on the prediction or forecasting. So, if you get to know that a particular variable grandest causes a given time series data, we can use that variable for better predictions. So, for that, we first need to know the Granger causality and for that, we also need to do the statistical test. But there are some limitations of Granger causality. First one is the Granger causality is, is not necessarily true causality. We also need to make sure that Granger causality is not confused with true causality. The second limitation of this is that if xt affects yt through a third time series variable zt, then we may not be able to find the Granger causality, even though there is presence of Granger causality between xt and yt that means xt granger causes yt but it's it happening through the third variable jt in that case the granger causality test we just learned in the previous section is not going to be able to find it out so that's another weakness of uh, you know the granger causality